Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative, intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and even a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. You can find me on my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, at kristenesser.com, and on Instagram, at kristenesser. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. Welcome to episode five, where I'm coming to you from spring break. I've got my cup of uh, Darjeeling tea, as I like to call it, Darjeeling. (laughs) This is one of my very favorite teas. It is um, loose leaf, Harney and Son, which I find, as I've mentioned before, a pretty economical brand of tea. And um, so, yeah, it's, uh, it's getting close to lunchtime here, but... I am completely enjoying this, enjoying this, so I highly recommend it. It's spring break time around here in the northern hemisphere, and we just came off of a week of Chloe being home from college, and it was also her birthday, so that was great. Her birthday almost always falls on spring break, which is um, really nice and enables me to be able to actually spend it with her. So she was home, we did um, a bunch of clothes shopping because she turns 20. And when you're 20, yeah, you get clothes for your birthday. (laughs) Actually, she was very, very happy with that. Some clothes and some books and she's sort of outfitted for for spring now. And um, we were able to, on her actual birthday, the the two boys um, were still in school because their spring break is actually this week. And so we were able to go to lunch and we went and saw the Black Panther together and then did our coffee house time where we each bring our laptops to this adorable little coffee house near us. And we sit in silence next to each other as we each work on writing projects. It's actually one of our favorite ways <laughs> of spending time together, which sounds really weird, but um, we actually really, really enjoy it. And she actually headed back um, to school on Easter, the way things worked. Um, so we actually celebrated Easter dinner the Saturday night before Easter, then got up the next day, Uh, went to church, had sort of a repeat of the dinner for lunch, and then put her on a train at two back to back to school. And it actually was kind of a nice way to do it. It made Easter a very relaxing day. I actually got a lot of knitting done that day because I didn't have to cook. Now, this week, the boys are off and Jonah is a senior in high school. And this is the fourth year in a row that basically spring break means college tours. It's like you do it as a prospective student and then as an admitted student. And with Chloe and Jonah being two years apart, this is the fourth year in a row where we're visiting colleges. So he and my husband are actually off at a college tour today. They're doing another one tomorrow. And then I'm taking him to one on Friday. And then in a couple of weeks, we go down to where Chloe goes to school and he's going to do another one there. So... Um, very exciting time, a little nerve wracking. And I just, I'll be glad to, to know that he's made his decision and that he's made the right decision, which I'm sure he will. Actually, he's all the schools that he is considering, they would all be good decisions. So the, the pressure's off there in some ways. So yeah, so it's spring break. I've got big plans. Personally, I took the week off of work just to, to be around. I've got some spring cleaning goals. Um, I actually sent out my first newsletter today. And so if you haven't signed up for that, I'll put a link in the show notes, but uh, I'm going to do, I'm starting a monthly newsletter. And um, so, yeah, so today it's just me and my son, Ben at home, who I have sent to his room (laughs) to say, please just stay up there while I record this podcast. And um, so he's got some goals for this spring break, too. He is now officially 15 and a half, and I just bought him the online driver's education um, package that he can do um, so that he can get his driver's license. So all of that, these kids turning 20 and going to college and starting to drive, crazy stuff, crazy stuff. Um, It's all good. It's all, I always tell myself in these situations where I get a little emotional about the changes that are coming, I try to tell myself that these changes are happening because everything's going right. It's a good thing that they're going to college. This was the plan all along. Yes, it's hard, but it's because it all went right. So just never, never forget the gratitude is, is what I try to keep in mind here. Well, enough about that. 
this episode, I've got um, some things to tell you uh, about quilting, a little bit of knitting news, and I mean a very little, um, a book and show that I'm kind of into right now, and um, a little bit on how I'm approaching some of the spring cleaning and chores with the kids. So let's get going with what's on my sewing table which is my quilting segment. As I was a little bit worried about um, when I started this podcast, because I, I work really slowly, I don't have a lot of progress to share. Actually, that's not quite true. I'm actually very pleased with my my progress. It's just in this um, social media, Instagram world where people seem to be churning out quilt tops you know, every few days. That is just not the speed at which I do these things. But here's what I have done. I'm working on this pineapple quilt. I've made excuses about it a million times here that it's not really my style, lest you sort of judge me. <laughs> but it's a it's a kit that I got when we went to Maui as a keepsake, as a, as my souvenir, and um, it's been sitting around. I'm I pulled it out and, and determined to finish it, and I'm making great progress. So what I did is I have applique down all the pineapples and all the leaves, and which is, I think, where I kind of left you um, last podcast. I may have just started the doing the leaves. And what I, I remember after I recorded that, I realized that I kind of missed the punchline of my story that um, I went to the quilt shop to get the monofilament thread to do the applique, um, the blanket stitch around the leaves. And the woman recommended, oh, don't, don't get monofilament. Um, get some variegated green. So we went over, we picked a green, I bought it, I came home, I went to go put it on my thread rack, and there was the exact same spool sitting there. Like I had bought it five years ago when I started this project and completely forgot about it. So, you know, what can I say? Three, three dollars down the drain there. I tackled these pineapples like a couple a day for a week or whatever however long it took me and I just I was texting my friend saying I just I'm in blanket stitch hell this is so boring I just had to have like a a show playing in the background on my iPad just to, or a podcast or something just to, to to get through it um but I'm so much better at it than when I started I've really learned how to turn tight corners and how to not lose my points on the end of my little pineapple leaves um and to really, let's say, it's like I really learned the steps that the, the needle was going through so that I would know that if I turn now, it's not going to do some backward stitch right back into my background fabric, which happened more than once, let me tell you. I learned how to, to lock down the stitches without it getting ugly. And But uh, so it's all, that part's done. I sewed this nine blocks. I sewed them together and then was so happy to get going on the borders. There's three rounds of borders on this. And... Um, I kind of hate sewing borders, so this is another <laughs> another trial for me. But the first round of borders um, are half square triangles, so that was fun. I just you know I did an eight at a time method, knocked them out you know in one night or something, and then I went to sew them together. And the thing with um, borders like that is you know you need them to fit perfectly to the center medallion of your quilt, right? And so you're, you've got these competing objectives of keeping sharp points and making it fit. And ultimately making it fit is going to trump sharp points. And so I, you know, so many of these little, I'm looking at it right now, these little um, half square triangles came to perfect points. And then I had to kind of go, it came out too big. Like, I don't know, somewhere between a quarter, maybe even as much as a half inch. And I'm kind of a stickler for accuracy, so I don't exactly know what the situation was here, but I just had to go back in and just sew a few threads, you know, some of these blocks, just a few threads smaller until they all fit. And every time I sacrificed a perfect point, I died a little bit inside. <laughs> so um, that took me a few nights because I could only kind of bear to do one one of these at a time. So um, so that round is, is, is on, and now... Um, there's a, a one inch border um, that kind of separates the next border, which is a piano key. And so I just do need to now I, I need to sit, sit down and cut those pieces. And everything is done in this very color wash, um, warm and cool uh, colors together. Um, you know, like one 
quadrant of his, its kind of cool colors and then that kind of melds into warmer colors. So this is going to take a little while to um, to cut and arrange. But at this point, like, so the accuracy on those doesn't matter nearly as much because it's there's so many of them and it's going to look so chaotic. So definitely the hardest part's done, except for I'm beginning to think about how I want to quilt it. And I'd like to go back in time and look at how they quilted this at that Maui quilt shop. I'm pretty sure they did um, kind of like a little wavy, jagged line across the pineapples as if it's got the little pointy pineapple spiky things, you know? And so that's pretty good. I, I think I can definitely do that. So I think I'm going to need to kind of custom quilt this where I'm really an all over meander kind of girl normally. So that's how I'm going to do the pineapples. Um, I'm tempted to not even quilt the the leaves but that might be too much so there's just there's so many little ones I'm not exactly sure I might just do a little kind of a zigzaggy in there and um, then I don't know what I'm gonna do for the background I seem to remember that they did some sort of a very tight meander because I remember thinking I could never do that I was a very new quilter and I was thinking I could never do that um, but I'm not a fan of just the, your typical stipple meander anymore. I've done it so many times I feel like I've moved on. So I'm going to need to come up with some other type of filler for the background. And I'm tempted to try something like squirrel, something I'm terrible at to, to get better, but I don't know if I'm brave enough for that. And then I'll have these three layers of borders to quilt too. So I think there's, there's going to be a few motifs here um, and some different thread changes for sure. So it's definitely a new uh, quilting frontier for me, but I'm up for it. Um, and I'm going to try to just really use it as a, as a learning experience. And the only other thing that's sort of on my radar quilt wise right now is my son Ben has asked me to make him a new quilt for his bed. And the one that I made him that's on there right now, he was so much younger. I, I don't even know how old he was, but it's all bright orange and lime green and you know these colors that really don't um, reflect the very gray and khaki loving child that he has become and I found this quilt it was actually during the uh, IG quilt fest Amy Ellis from Amy's creative side posted a quilt that was the pattern in the inaugural issue of curated quilts and it was called rooftop wonders and it's it is actually block based it looks very improv but it's not. It's a rectangular block that is, um, I think it's probably, I haven't quite looked at it, I think it's probably strip pieced, but then it's turned different ways throughout the quilt, so it looks very random, and it was a lot, her color choices were a lot of, of um, beiges and grays with some pops of um, burgundy and blue and kind of darker colors, and, and I looked at it on my you know iPad and just said this looks like Ben and I said what do you think and he looked at it, he said I love it and at first I thought you know what I can kind of just riff off this I'll do it myself but ultimately you know what I just bought the magazine and I'm gonna follow the pattern <laughs> because it, I just feel like why expend the energy why not just um, reward the woman who came up with this idea so I'm excited about that I need to start shopping for fabrics I'm thinking about um, not just tans and grays but maybe some, I think it's called Essex linen. So it's got a little bit more texture going on. I can really picture the um, couple different shades of, of tans and browns and a couple different shades of gray um, in these linens would be really pretty with some more solid pops of, of color. So it's a solid space quilt. I'll, I'll try to find a picture that I can put in the show notes. Um, so that you can see it but it's it's beautiful and I'm kind of excited to get started on that but I'm going to be monogamous here and knock this pineapple quilt off first. In terms of what's on my needles for knitting well I have not made a lot of progress well, that's not really fair I've been knitting these Neapolitan socks that I've talked about the last couple episodes and I am on the toe decreases probably a half an inch from the end of the second sock. So actually made a ton of progress. Vanilla socks, they've been so just relaxing to knit. I knit a ton of them on Easter out on the patio where we had beautiful weather and we've got new cushions out there and I kind of just spruced it up a little bit and it was very nice. And um, so that's just about 
done that pair and then I think I'm going to go ahead and re-tackle those colorwork mittens that have been in timeout for about three weeks now and then while Chloe was home I, I talked about the tea leaves sweater last week and while she was home I had her try it on and it fits her perfectly and I wanted to double check that the sleeves were going to be a good length and they are just like exactly as written from the patterns so I've got about uh, like eight rows left on one sleeve and then this is the other sleeve and I think I'm almost done so that will sort of be my my first uh, completion for the things I want to knit her for Norway and then I need to seriously get serious about about that but knitting has just kind of been my um, happy place just knitting those socks because it's just round and round and you know a little bit of paying attention to turn the heel and pick up stitches and then um, you know, just watching TV, hanging out with the family, sitting on the patio. It's just been like, just like the perfect little project for me lately. Even though I watched a ton of TV on my iPad while I was blanket stitching myself to death, I uh, just haven't really settled in on a new show that I'm really in love with. I'm still mourning the the end of Shetland for now. Um, but then I had a friend who contacted me and asked if I'd ever read this series of books called The Cazalet Chronicles. It's a series of three books by Elizabeth Jane Howard. The first one's called The Light Years. The second one is Marking Time and then Confusion. Maybe, maybe I might have those in the wrong order. But anyways, I read them years ago and I was like, oh my goodness, I forgot about those books. I would love to reread them. And then she texted me and said, did you know there was a movie? And I said, or a, yeah, or a miniseries or something. And I said, I had no idea. So she sent me the link, which I will put in the show notes. And then as soon as I was five minutes in, I was like, I have totally seen this. <laughs> but that does not mean that it's not completely fun to watch again. So um, so that's what I've been doing is I started uh, watching the Cazalette Chronicles. And it's making me want to reread the book, book series. Um, although... I have to say that the the show is very um, true to the book as I remember it, but it is a one of those epic series that is in England, of, of course. Is, does that sort of like go without saying at this point? That starts before World War II, and you kind of see their way of life, and then the war comes, and I think that's the middle book, and then after war. And um, so it's just this epic journey through this whole extended family. And they all get together at the, you know, the rich, of course, the summer house in Essex. And they all, Sussex, not Essex. And they all come at the beginning and all the cousins get together. And it actually kind of reminded me of, we do this family trip to this lake house every other year with my, my brothers and uh, my dad. And we all show up and there's, you know, like, I don't know, 11 cousins and, you know, and my brothers and their wives and it's great. And, um, so it's a very kind of similar vibe. You know, we don't have any servants sadly, but <laughs> so anyway, so that is exactly where, um, you know, this is, this is like, and I uh, want to reread it now. And I, I love to reread books. I don't know about you. So that's my, my book recommendation and, um, show as well. I'll put them both in the show notes. And the other thing that I want to investigate a little further is my brother is here right now. Um, he and his wife are here from Idaho, and I was having coffee with him this morning, which is quite a treat. And we like to share TV shows. And I was asking if he had ever seen Shetland, and he's like, yeah, I'm totally into Nordic noir. I'm like, what are you talking about? So apparently it's a genre that I didn't even know about, that things like um, Shetland and Broadchurch and a bunch of other shows that he gave me the names of that I will check out um, belong to this whole thing of, of Nordic noir. And some of them you can watch, they're actually in Swedish or in Icelandic, is that a language? I don't know. And so you have to do this whole subtitle thing. So I'm kind of excited to know that there is a name for this thing that I've so recently become obsessed with. And lastly, um, I just wanna talk a little bit about spring cleaning and you know how during this transition of seasons I just I, I feel this this energy for making those changes because you're kind of tired of whatever season you're in even here in Southern California where the change of seasons is subtle to say the least but um, you know it's lighter 
later in the in the day now and so we're doing a little work of um as i mentioned before getting the backyard cleaned up it's it's more talk than actual work at this point but we did get some new um cushions for the outside furniture and we've been spent enjoying spending time out there and we're doing a lot of talking about um the changes that we want to make in the yard and how we want to kind of get some areas under control that are definitely slightly out of control and we want to get our garden in stuff like that so um that's all happening. I've got some goals during spring break here of doing some deep cleaning in the in the kitchen. You know, I've already I've gone through the refrigerator and the freezer and some of the, the cabinets that were getting out of control. And I want to just like work my way through them. And this reminded me of a couple years ago, we did this thing um, called, we called it, I called it family service hour. And it was a day where, um, it was really weighing on me that we needed to wash the windows in the house. And when it gets to be spring and I'm pretty sure the rain's all done, I am so anxious to wash the windows inside and out and because I think it just really changes the light, but it is an overwhelming chore to me. And at some point I realized that I had these three able-bodied children that I could employ. So all five of us split up. I think the Um, My husband and the boys tackled the outside and then Chloe and I tackled the inside and we washed every window in the house inside and out in an hour. And it was just like, this was, this was like something that I would like tackle over several weekends and sometimes Gary would help, but it would just take forever. And it just really brought home to me that I have, these are skills that my kids need to know. They need to know that there are chores that need to be done. And frankly, uh, you know, probably I should be washing the windows of my house more than once a year (laughs) and I do on a you know spot basis but in terms of like I love just to have it all done at the same time but they need to learn to do these things they need to chip in to to help to run this house that they are are living in and so I had sort of vowed and I think I even did a blog post on it that I was going to do this like once a week on like Sunday afternoons we'd have family service hour and we would tackle these chores, these deep cleaning kind of chores that I dread doing and I put off. And we've done it with, um, before the holidays, I will do it with the china cabinet. I'm looking at that right now where we will wash every dish in the china cabinet and I'll wipe it down and clean all the windows so that when we, as we get into Thanksgiving and Christmas, when we're using these dishes that have been sitting around, let's face it for, you know, six months to a year without being used, everything's ready to go. And, uh, but I've never really incorporated it on, on a weekly basis, like I thought, but, um, and I don't know if that I ever will, but it is a really a nice thing to, to be able to really pitch in as a family. And we did this, um, my husband was at work, but on good Friday, everyone was home. The boys were off of school. Chloe was still in spring break. And we kind of did this thing where I said, okay, we're going to spend 45 minutes and we're going to clean this house top to bottom. So Ben handles the kitchen. He cleans the kitchen better than I do, to be honest with you. Don't tell him I said that. And I'll clean the bathrooms. Chloe and Jonah will break up the dusting and vacuuming. And something that will take me three hours to do, we can tackle in 45 minutes to an hour because we've got four people on it. So this is a a revelation that I've had. And I think it's good for the kids to really pitch in their skills they need to know. And uh, it just makes my life so much easier And I try to think of this whole thing with raising kids as sort of, you know, working my way out of a job. (laughs) And as time has gone on here, you know, I don't have to clean as much. Um, Everyone is doing their own laundry at this point, because once you're in high school, you have to handle your own laundry in in this house. And and that just kind of, you know, opens up time to be able to do things like this or to or to sometimes even tackle those bigger cleaning jobs, um, you know, cleaning out the garage or, or whatever that you never seem to get to because you're just trying to keep your head above water and, you know, keep the, the kitchens and the bathroom at a, at a certain stage. So, so anyways, that's how, kind of how I'm, I'm thinking about this. And as a matter of fact, I think Ben and I this afternoon are going to tackle wiping down all the kitchen cabinets together and we'll just, you know, knock it out in probably 20 minutes and, uh, and I might, will probably make it worth his while. I don't often pay kids for things like this, but sometimes I will give them a little spending money here and there to, um, as a little bit of an incentive, and then they can go get a frozen yogurt with their friends afterwards or something. 
Well, that about does it for this episode. Thank you so much for spending time with me. I absolutely appreciate it. Thanks to you who have left reviews and ratings on iTunes. I very much appreciate that. And they're so fun to read and it uh, is so helpful to me. So thank you for that. And we will see you next time.